Hello, kitties. You better like this review by Razor Rekka. Because I know where you live. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Because all blessed. Well, what do we got here? All things are possible if you believe. Which is uh, Mark uh, you know, 923 there. So here we are. And, um, you know, it comes a time in every Cooper fan's life that he gets to do his first Alice Cooper review. My first review on this channel was actually, bizarrely enough and unintentionally, uh, a Black Sabbath movie review. Which wasn't Black Sabbath the band, though that's where they got their name from. Uh, reportedly. But no, I'm about to review uh, the grand uh, latest release, though it's taken some time and everybody's kind of over it now. But no, it's still a top uh, number one actual Billboard hit, you know, release. Uh, on vinyl and CD, of course. But um, I'm about to run, run down the tracks and give you my very Alice Cooper fan um, uh, certified review of this stellar powerful if 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 the late last release then oh my god it's what a way to go uh what else would you expect of course we all as, as deep loving longtime fans and new uh love to see alice go on and on well you know that's just not possible but you know the, the albums are immortal and, uh, and we still have wednesday 13 <laughs> He's my uh, he's my closest thing to a replacement, Alice. Though I think Calico Cooper would fit the bill as well. Maybe they could do a band together. That, that wouldn't that be great? So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go through each track and let you know what I bedinks, what I bedinks, baby blue. So what do we got here? What we got here is a little bedinga do. So you know what we got here is the first track. Ah. Now, of course, it's rock and roll. Very suitable. I mean, the album is just about Detroit rock and just a love of rock and roll in general. And uh, we all can relate to rock and roll because we wouldn't have our metal and so much other stuff we enjoy other genres without it. Very important thing to kick the doors open for, for a wider range of uh, fine, fine music. And my life was saved by rock and roll, so so can yours. So in any case, uh, yeah, this is, as we know, it's a, a Velvet Underground uh, release originally in 67, 68. Um, great. It's not Detroit. You all know that. It, it, it might as well. It's very interchangeable, New York, Detroit, that feel, but, uh, but in ways very different as well, you know, demographically, geographically. And um, so, so Detroit. I don't know if it's the best way to open the album. They 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 hit it. It was the first uh, hint of a release uh, that we got a taste of the album from. And I was like, why a cover? Didn't we just go through an all covers album with uh, breadcrumbs that preceded this? But um, and then there are a few uh, breadcrumb covers on here, which was like, oh, I mean. Uh, re-releases, but he re-recorded them apparently, to freshen them up and give you a new version at least but um, but anyway, so Detroit's, you know, what is it, rock and roll eh, I love it a lot you know, man, it's a stellar it just blows the song up into a new level of, of, of musicianship, of course and, and yet still raw and punchy great, great, you know, it's a good opener, I understand it, but I would have rather an original and uh, something real raucous, like old school uh, Alice Cooper, uh, the, the killer love at the death days, which we get some of that style on this album as well. So let's move on over to our next uh, release. We're going to be doing The Limits as well, which is uh, we just released yesterday. Uh, it's Bobby Lebling of the phenomenal Pentagram uh, band. Uh, Almost as old and, and not notoriable as Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath. But here we go. Go Man Go from Alice Cooper. Oh, I'm going to do the limit review. It's called uh, Caveman Logic. And uh, that's going to be my next review. If this one goes well, if you show me some love. Oh, it's upside down there. Because uh, I'm going to take you to the limit of the limits. Whoa. So there you go, man. Go. Go, man. Go.
Let me tell you a thing good new about the song right here, Baby Blue. The rock and roll. What do we got here? No, there, no. Go Man Go. Go Man Go I love. I can't believe Alice originally wrote this song. Well, he probably you know wrote it with someone else or whatever, how he does often. But it's, it's you know, it's right out of, you know, James Dean, you would think of with a song or listen to this while he freaking ran his car into another and you know, 1955 in California. Holy McGoley, what happened there again? But that would have been a good song to, you know, go off a cliff with, uh, you know, 150 miles an hour. Go, man, go, baby. Baby baby, uh, baby Joe there. So there's uh, Go, Man, Go. I do love that. That is a very Alice song, though. It's a little 50s-ish for me. Uh, you know, more 50s-ish than Alice. But Alice freaking just, well, it's his song. I'll, I'll give it to him. So, you know, I yell, go, man, go to the next song. And uh, this, here we go. What we got here is, well, you know, this took me a little while to wrap my head around. What do we got here? Uh, Our love will change the world. Okay, I get it. It's a 60s retro uh, Beatles approach to Ozzy and Alice love so much. And and they're now, you know, luckily they're all not only beginning, but, but I'm, but... With this song, I love, love, love the, the political message. It's an anti-political message, but, you know, it, it's anti-identity politics and, and PC madness. And, you know, that's that's being churned out in our, in our uh, come on, admit it, our colleges have just been taken over by this ideology and turning our uh, uh, Western world into a strange place that you won't recognize, you know, when you look into its eyes. So you can't let their love change the world because it's it's a it's not it's 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 a it's a mask of love. But what's behind that mask of love? Uh, you know, I don't want to have to. But it's far leftist, you know, uh, stuff. Now I, we do need a left and right politics, but we can't have far right. We can't have far left. I said it on the Dr. Phil show during the. Uh, Smollett uh, scandal with a false hate crime. I was on that show. Look it up. But in any case, uh, so there's that. Uh, then you got the next song is uh, Social Debris. Now, Holy Magolis. Let me tell you a thing or two about Holy Magolis. Uh, Social Debris. This is a. This is a, three three albums in a row now. Studio albums that we've we've gotten three or four songs or less. Uh, of the original lineup, uh, surviving members of it, minus the lead guitarist Glenn Bucks, and would say Alice always gets somebody really cool to fill in the guitar parts. And we just got this guy who's an unknown who just uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, plugged in and, and, and sent it digitally online this solo. And he went back and forth with Bob Ezrin and Alice, and just this unknown did the solo for this song. And this is this song is so incredible. It's, it, it's obviously a return to love it to death, killer days of the band, and uh, I think it's like the, almost as good as I'm 18. I mean, uh, Neil Smith, I believe, wrote the uh, song. He's a great songwriter. Uh, Alice tweaked it, of course. Everybody does their part and makes it their own. And then this is the end result. And Bob Ezrin does a killer job. Now I don't think he did a, such a great job on the Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, that album, oof, you know, I wanted to like it. It's definitely experimental, but it wasn't what I wanted to be. Welcome to my nightmare. I mean, it should have just been more. I don't, know, I don't want to get there. It's about a review about Detroit story. So, so um, yeah, this is a phenomenal song. I I just love it. I love that it's a third single, and I love that one of the singles, popular singles off this, is actually an Al- a proper Alice Cooper group song. So that's that's a that's a fun thing as well. So next song, um, let me get a little bit of gubba coffee. There's nothing left in my train. Doodle wop. So in the bag. So what we got now is one thousand high heel shoes. Oh, I don't know if I got a closet big enough for 1,000 high heel shoes. But then again, maybe you shouldn't know that I got even 10 high heel shoes. You know, from, from women I got buried in the backyard here. And I tells you, I got a lot of burying space back here. But anyway, back to high heel shoes. 1,000 of them, in fact. 
So sh- this 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 reminds me a lot of uh, the sax sections off "Welcome to My Nightmare," um, and that I'm a big fan of, and it, which started with "Under My Wheels" probably, um, and just stuck with them ever since. You know, not taking up you know just a portion of every album, if ever. I don't think it went through the, the early '80s stuff or the glam stuff. Um, well, the, the hairband metal stuff. Oh, there's uh, Peeny, one of our cats. I wonder if you can see him. You want to see Peeny? There's a little Peeny. He's a teeny weeny, but we love our little, little weeny Peeny Peeny. There he goes. We got Peeny and we got Chewy. Two cats here. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so there's that. Oh, this is a very bluesy, you know, it's to do with the Motown, uh, you know, contribution in, in the Detroit rock scene, you know, heavy, bluesy, boom. And I, early Alice, uh, you know, took up, showed it where, you you know, this early inspiration as well with Welcome to My Nightmare and, and Killers. And so, but this is more just a direct, you know, ode to this, uh, a direct ode to the, uh, that aspect of the Detroit music scene at the time and um so yeah i love it you know it reminds me of uh, some folks and uh yeah a lot of stuff off welcome to my nightmare i'll feel it all right so here we go where are we on to now my ladies and gents let's see what we got here um oh this is a good one now hail mary um yes i love that there's like some, you know, nod to the Batman comic book character uh, in the in the album cover. You got these uh, beams of, uh, you know, this would originally, uh, you know, the Batman insignia, and then uh, it even goes on here, and you get a laser tag thing to drive your cats crazy with that has Alice's eyes on it, and um, so this is a sick. In this place, this is true. The sneering, snarly, witchy old, rocking, wicked Alice, you know, at his dark finest while just still rocking out, just like the only guy who ever did that right or was able to, you know, bring it originally bring it to the scene. And nobody's ever been able to, you know, match it. Just as so, this that's the Batman. Do, no, 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 do, no, 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 you know, no. He comes to this godforsaken town, Hail Mary, full of grace. You see what I mean? Just like a, okay, so I exaggerated as an extreme metal vocalist, but yeah, but Alice, it's just such a great song, this one. This is a, this is a good driving tune, uh, just good all the way around. So let's get to the next one. I know, I know this stuff takes time. Now, 2001. Uh, third rewrite of this uh, 2003 studio album deep cut um, of Detroit City. This is the 2021 album version. There was one that was first on the eyes, the, the eyes of Alice Cooper. Then uh, so, some years later, more recently, the, the, the EP release of uh, Red Crumbs was the first remake of it. A little more brutal than the studio one, though the studio album was meant was was noted as being you know one one uh, one take releases, you know, and trying to be very garage like with that one, and he's he's stuck with that to some degree or more or less ever since. Thankfully, because I think that's his strongest uh, suit. But in any case, uh, this third version they changed the chorus a little bit, which is right here. Um, and I appreciate that. That kind of makes it, you know, uh, tweaks it enough, makes it its own song. And that doesn't keep us giving us like just barely changed remakes of his own song, which is a very out song. It's a great song. Yeah. Losing the hair, folks. I know it's a sad situation for every man, but you know, it is what it is. I could wear a hat and be on dishonest, like old good old Kevin DeBrow, but there are wig in that case. I can't be playing that game. I got to keep it real. God bless you, Kevin DeBrow. And now freaking uh, Frankie Benali. Uh, on your way to heaven. Uh, you know. 
So what else we got there? What else we got there is... Uh, oh! Oh, baby, baby, let me tell you a ba-ding, a ga ba So anyways, 